Today I'm going to show you how to create a visual self-presentation for application purposes. Just let me show you what I'm talking about. For instance, you can add a presentation to your application documents, print it as an overview. You can use it in job interviews, either on a tablet or in a portfolio. Or you might share it online and make it accessible via link in your application documents. For this, it's necessary that you've already done some photographic documentation of your work. In times of mobile photography, that's not a big deal, but you should be aware of not hurting your employees' interests, because if you go against rules or if you reveal secrets of your company, a recruiter might assume that your indiscretion could affect his company too, and your chance to get the job would decrease rapidly. If you do not own the full version of PowerPoint, you can switch to the free online version, which is, however, limited in its features. As an alternative, you can install the free trial version of Microsoft Office, downloadable on office.com. On the right side, you see the full version of PowerPoint. The trial version can be used without any restrictions for a period of 30 days. Beyond that, you can purchase a low-cost license that can be cancelled monthly. In my point of view, this is the best choice for occasional users. In return, you get a full-featured Office package, including Word, Excel and Companions. But first, let's have a look at the free online version of PowerPoint. Those one who are interested in a tutorial for the full version may continue with the following PowerPoint video. PowerPoint Online runs in the browser on condition that you have logged into your Microsoft account. If you own Windows 8 or higher, you should have a Microsoft account already, otherwise you can register for free at login.live.com. Then you click here and you see the registration form. Finally, if you have a Microsoft account, you go to office.com to sign in, select your account and type in your password. You can run PowerPoint directly after you've logged in and you start with a blank presentation that means without any design elements. You can change that later at any time if you want, but I recommend an unobtrusive design for drawing the viewer's attention to the images and to minimize ink consumption in case you want to print your presentation. At first, we give it a name. Up here, I enter the current date in front, year, month and day. Then I describe it as references. And that will also be the name of the file, as you can see in the tab title on top. This presentation is saved automatically. I close it for a moment to show you where to find it. You can reopen the file in the document folder of your OneDrive storage space. So you click on OneDrive, Documents, and here it is. In order to open the file in PowerPoint Online again, we need to choose Edit in the browser, otherwise you're just in a viewing mode. And now we're back where we started, and that's all about file management on your OneDrive. By the way, I can change to a full page view by pressing F11, so I have more space to work. And you can return to the normal view at any time by pressing F11 again and once again. Every photo will be placed on one slide. Just think of a slide as one page. On the left hand side you see the slide overview and on the right is the selected slide you're working on. Now, the title slide can be left as is, except that I enter a title and a subtitle. A proper title would be References, and of course your name should appear there too. 
The most convenient way to insert images is by using picture layouts. Picture layout means there are defined positions and formats for images and text elements. Thus, we ensure consistency for all slides instead of working by the rule of thumb. That gives our presentation a more professional appearance and we don't have to spend our time on arranging elements on slides. Beside the picture, we have input boxes for a title and some detailed information, which is useful to tell the viewer about the context of the reference and what your contribution was. Since a reference is usually the result of a collaboration, and of course you're supposed to be honest about your part, otherwise it would be a misrepresentation, as the law says. Let's go back to our initial presentation. Before inserting a picture, we gotta create a new slide. So we right click next to a slide thumbnail on the left and choose New Slide. The inserted slide doesn't have a picture layout yet, so we need to assign it by right clicking on our new slide thumbnail and choosing Layout and then Picture with Caption. Finally, confirm by clicking on Change Layout. If we take a look on the full page slides on the right, we can see that our picture layout has been applied. And fortunately we need to take this step only once, as every new slide I insert is instantly given picture layout. In contrast to desktop applications, the online version of PowerPoint does not support drag and drop for inserting images, as you might be used to from your desktop application. You see, I'm not able to draw an image into the presentation. So, we need to open an Insert dialog, which is done best by left-clicking on this icon in the Picture Placeholder. In this dialog, we navigate to the folder that contains our images and we select one single image. To our disadvantage, it's not possible to select multiple images at the same time, so in fact, we need to insert every single image separately. For reasons of consistency, the picture placeholder contains only a cropped version of the original image, and especially high-size photos are affected by that. Yet, you may vary the visible part of the picture by right-clicking on it and choosing Crop. The visible part is highlighted and indicated by these black lines. The invisible part is grayed out. Now if you move the pointer over the picture, it turns into a four-directional pointer and you can change the image section by dragging it with the left mouse button. When you've finished cropping, just click beside the picture. Left of the picture you see two more layout elements reserved for text. The upper element contains a headline that refers to our reference and beneath we can add some more details about what customer we served if there was a special occasion and, of course, what we've done here exactly. I'd prefer to make a list, so I select all the paragraphs while holding down the left mouse key and I activate bullets up here. In order to use white space more efficiently, we can either increase the font size here And or we can increase the line spacing up here. Be careful, uh, probably a result can be only seen if you click inside the text box. Finally, we should align our list to the middle of the text box. By the way, don't mind the altered size of the bullets. If you deselect the text box, they return to a normal size. Okay. I align the headline to the middle too, so it flushes with the upper edge of the picture. And yeah, that's what we need to do now for every single reference, at least for the most representative ones. I would suggest to set a limit of 10 to 12 references at maximum. Just keep in mind that most recruiters have to struggle with a constant lack of time, so less is more. When the presentation is done, we can print it out. You should know that PowerPoint Online does not support direct printing, only the creation of PDF files, 
which are printable as well. And as the portable document format is the recommended file type for online applications anyway, I'm fine with it. So I'm downloading the PDF to see if everything is okay. Go to File, Print, Print to PDF. And it's being generated, ready for download. And the PDF opens up in the PDF viewer of the browser. All right. Now I'm just having a look at the document properties to check the file size. As the file size of an online application should not go beyond 3 megabytes. And as we see, it's just about 1.4 megabytes. That's absolutely okay. Although the size of our raw image material is about 4 megabytes. So even if you work with high resolution material in PowerPoint, file size shouldn't be a problem since all the images are compressed automatically when the PDF is created. As I'm satisfied, I save the file. And there are two ways to do this, either by using the shortcut combination Control S, means you press Control and S simultaneously. Uh, then you can select a folder to save the file or simply click the download icon. However, in this case, according to your browser, your file might be saved to the download folder. That's what happens here. I choose saving file in the browser. And now the file is accessible in the download folder, which can be opened by clicking on the downwards arrow in the top bar of the browser. And that folder icon. And here is the download folder. Or you go to the Windows Explorer and open the download folder from there. Just click on the Windows icon in the taskbar, go to Explorer, and in the left column you find a folder called Downloads. And here it is. So now we've saved our file locally, but we still need to print it out. And for this, I'm opening the file in a separate PDF viewing tool. And I do that because it just features some more comfortable printing options, such as a printing preview or several layout settings. I use Adobe's Acrobat Reader, which is available for free. And here the printing menu opened up automatically. Otherwise, you can find it under File and Print. Or simply by using the shortcut combination Control plus P. If you want to print the presentation for a job interview, then you should print every reference on one single sheet of paper, which then can be put into a sheet protector to be stored in a folder. A so-called table flip chart makes your performance a bit more professional. This is a special construction that you can set up on a table Thus, you are able to present your work adequately in front of several recruiters and your hands are free so that you can use it for moderation. So, for one page printing, you first need to select Size. The printing preview gives you an impression of the result. Here you see the difference. We go back to Size. Don't print the document in its actual size. Otherwise, uh, the slide would be cropped, so we check Fit. And I'm doing a short overall check. Okay, and we're ready to print. For your written application, you should avoid printing out just one reference per page. Instead, you should attach an overview, as you can see here in the preview. Thus, you minimize the number of pages and the consumption of ink Otherwise, you would run out of ink just by printing out a few applications. To achieve this, I open up the printing options in the PDF software. And on the left side, I click multiple. And the printing preview tells me that several slides will be placed on one page. The default option is four slides per page. And you better choose a landscape format to maximize picture size and to have less white space. The presentation of six images per page is acceptable as well. Don't ask me why we see the portrait format, although we have a landscape orientation selected. Anyway, we are ready to print.